welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy, and we are heading out right now, and of course it's raining. I've got a four and a half hour drive. I'm going to be driving down to Cleveland to meet Bagpipes, and uh, then we're going to be going over to his uh, parents' house. Unfortunately, they're going into assisted living. Um, he asked me to look through the estate to see if there was anything worthwhile uh, in there. I'll purchase things if, if I needed them. That's going to be a little bit difficult for me because, again, I knew them all the time when I was growing up, but they also don't want the stuff, so that's going to be tough. Um, then tomorrow morning, we're heading on out, and hopefully the rain does stop. We're heading on out to a flea market in, I believe it's Springfield, Ohio. Uh, luckily, I have the directions over in the car. Uh, going to be meeting with a very special friend of the channel, so you'll be hopefully seeing some of that video as well. Uh, hopefully I get a lot of great finds, and I'll be checking in when I get over to Ohio. Uh, you'll meet uh, bagpipes, and we'll go from there. So, see you in about four and a half hours. We have a local celebrity with me, I say. Why don't you introduce yourself? Don, auction professor. This is Marky, my wife, for those of you who have seen her before. Um, once in a while she's out with yes. me, so this is one of those times for meeting Dave here. Too bad Chuck didn't come, but you know. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, we went out and shared a lot of stories over uh, lunch and everything like that. So it was a lot of fun, and I would lunch next time. He would not let me pick up the bill. So to everybody out there, if you see him in public, he's buying you meals. So just <laughs> come up to him. Um, so we ended up meeting up today. Where did we meet at as far as? Springfield Flea Market. It's supposed to be, at least they quote, it's one of the top ten in the country. And it was, it was huge. huge. I got through maybe a quarter of it in five hours. What about? I have no idea how much of it I got through. Yeah. Because I was wandering. I was completely lost. A little tip, if you do go to anything large like this, the one problem that this flea market had, there was no markings in the parking lot. So I had no idea at all where I was parked at. And we were wandering around, and it was a swampy day today. We were wandering around through, almost swimming to try to find the car. I had to change my shoes. <laughs> So, do note where you are, and there were three different entrances to the place. Four, oh, four. The back back side. Yeah, there's the, the there's a canal, I don't know what it's called, but there's a back entrance that everybody is parking. They lined up the entire road, if you notice that on the way out. Okay, yeah. Did you guys pull out from 70? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that whole, if you saw them parking on the other side, all the cops out there lining up and blocking ways. Yeah, it was packed. So that is a that is a concern. Definitely know where you're where you're parked at because I'm gonna say something that I think you can probably back me up on. Books and paper can get really, really heavy <laughs> in eighty degree weather when you're walking three quarters of a mile to a mile and you don't know where you're going because you can't find your car. So definitely do know where you park at. Um, do figure that out going in because I did not do so and trust me I back stealing it right now. So did you buy anything up there today? Yeah, but just like you, I was cautious because of, um, I, they had a huge stack of very good pre-war Jazz 78s, but I had no idea how far the car was, and there was no way I was carrying 50 pounds of records with bags in my hand on top of it, so I probably passed on the best thing that they had that I, I would have bought. Um, but I did get uh, a real nice China card from Hissing, I think. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but a real nice China card, real photo, uh, stereo view, U.S. Ones. That's probably my best thing. Silverware, I got some buttons, a uh, bunch of postcards. It wasn't a lot. You saw the one bag I got. Yeah, I, I got bag. some stuff. It, it actually stunned me. That was, I, there's I, 50 I, items in that bag, though, oh, at least. So. Wow. Yeah, they're all small stuff. Yeah, you're so. definitely going to small. I'm... Not quite going to Smalls right now. I still got a lot of stuff it. over there. I said I wasn't going to make another trip back to the car because my car was parked in the food and it was like a bounce around trying to find where I could walk where there wasn't mud. I don't know about you, but they had mud puddles that were this deep in the mud. There was cars already stuck out there if you saw that. Yeah, I was worried about getting stuck out there too. Any tips you can give anybody if they do come to these large flea markets, just in general? Um, they had a preview for this one. and I would honestly recommend if you ever are going to one, go to the preview. Today was different because, as you know, we both found the same issue, that it had rained like 20 minutes before they opened it, so everybody has still other stuff put away. But usually, if you go to the preview, it costs you extra, but it's usually like, like the, this one here, if you paid the 15 bucks, you got the entire three-day show, you got the preview, but that's when the dealers are swapping with dealer stuff at that time, and that's usually when the best stuff's out is preview 
it was what 7:30 to 12, I think, was the preview today. So I would always recommend going to the preview. Like here, I was told that Sunday deals were already packing up because they sold all the good stuff. So you really want to go early on, on these big events. Did, did, you, did you hear too? They said there was more than 10,000 people in there today. Did you hear that on the wow. PA? Because they, they, they were auditing and they were clicking when they were coming in. Okay. They're only allowed to have so many people out there, apparently, was the conversation I heard. Fire marshal for outdoors? <laughs> there is, I, we must have run across like 10 different deputy sheriff's vehicles sitting out there. Wow. Plus, did you see them running around too? Yeah. I don't know how well you, what you saw in you. I don't know where you came in at. It was such a bigger place. I've never yeah. been out there before, but that's any place I go to like that to just get there early. Get there early. Well, I'm, I'm going to slightly disagree with you. I would say I would say get there early or get there late, not on the last day, but get there late on one of the other days Deal if you have your niche because, again, you can get the deals on it, and this turned out to be an absolutely lovely day. However, if it were raining all day today, it been done. you would have been done. Tomorrow, they're getting desperate to make their sales because I have no idea what one of those booths costs for, but just having been around the trade forever, the dealers in their head, I paid $500 for my spot. I've got to get that back. And hotel, food, all that. They've got all that figured in, and they're willing to make a deal if they're below that just to get to that. So at least in their head, they think, I'm going to finally start making money. And so they're willing to, to deal with people at times just because of that. So uh, a little insider tri uh, tip that I always do, I always talk to the dealers and ask them how they're doing not specific numbers or anything. If I start hearing from a number of dealers they're not doing deal so day. well, it's deal day. Exactly the way that it is. But uh, I, did, I talked to dealers. There were dealers all the way from Florida here today. Wow. One guy I'd recognize the accent, he was from the New Orleans area, which I was like shocked that they drive that far. And there was one person that says he was from Nevada, but he's doing some big roundabout like a circuit almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of them do that though. But he had a big huge vehicle he was towing and he had one of those big panel vans loaded from top to bottom in his tables. I wouldn't want to have to do all that. It's been years since I did a flea market setup. Oh, they, I will say this. They definitely earned their money. There is no doubt whatsoever they earned their money. And I know uh, the one gentleman I was talking to, and this is another thing that people that aren't in the trade may not know, He's a lot of the people don't even get hotels. They sleep in their vehicles. I was just going to say, he was doing that. Yep. He was doing and that. He said he got woken up at like 5 o'clock in the morning by the pounding of the rain and the lightning and everything like that. So... That's a tough life for them. God bless them. Um, you know, they help us out. They definitely help us out because there's no way that you as one person or me as one person could possibly see all the various things that they do. And, you know, if you got people coming from Nevada, people coming from Florida, that's tens of thousands of estates that are getting picked, all brought to one place that we then have our expertise, that we pick what we know out of it. And um, I came here with uh, bagpipes as... as you saw earlier in the video and he was asking you know how these people how they do it how they think and I said a lot of times they haven't cleared out the entire estate and if they cleared out the estate because of the furniture they place no value on the magazines and if they can get thirty dollars out of a pile of magazines it's found money as far as they're concerned because they knew they made their money off the furniture or whatever they happen to deal with so that's yet one last insider tip uh, well, there's a, we'll give them all away and you won't subscribe anymore, uh, <laughs> is always, I tend to find the best deals on paper from the non-paper dealers. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Because they don't care. Yeah. Even if they don't know, they don't care. So they're, they're not going to look it up. They, they know the glassware. That's what they know. The other stuff, it's a pile of magazines. Who would want that? $20, get it out of here. Get that junk out of here. Um, and I would do the same thing if I had the glass one. I'd be like, get the glass one out of here. It's going to break. I don't care about it. So it's what you know. This is what it all comes down to. My best best purchases today were from uh, people who don't do eBay. Yep. You know, because I, I talked and I, I rapped with a couple of people there for probably 10 or 15 minutes. Somebody recognized me in the first first booth I went into. He knew who I was, which I was surprised. <laughs> oh, oh, someone else. But no, no, yeah. And um, he, he, we were talking and I asked him some questions and stuff. In fact, you'll, you'll see him in my video, but um, Wayne was the guy's name. And uh, this is all he does. He's a flea market guy, the old school stuff. Like, I used to just do flea markets. So we had all these set of flea markets and eBay on the side for the better stuff. And everything else was went to the flea market. It was easy. It's all cash. And, you know, so you got the money there, you don't have to wait. Back in those days, obviously, checks would show up in the mail from eBay. And, right. You know, you never knew if it was going to bounce and all that other kind of stuff. So, 
Well, plus you also can, within, you, you have a lot more ability to sell more or less whatever you want at the flea market. I know there's a sign up, nothing illegal, but beyond that, if you I want to sell. I saw some illegal items Yes, there, I believe yeah, I did yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to sell a little black sample, have at it. Sell a little black sample. I saw that out there too. Yep, yeah. whereas you put that on eBay, it'll get booted to sell. Immediately. Yep, and then you're in trouble. So, do hit the like button. I want to thank you very much for, uh, well, for, for lunch. It was delicious. You don't have to thank me for that. And thank you very much for uh, coming out, and thank you very much for being on the channel. We definitely do appreciate it, and we will see you next video. Thanks.